Post hoc ergo propter hoc logical fallacy. What does this phrase even mean? Well, it's a Latin phrase which means after this, therefore because of this. Because this logical fallacy states that because an event or action happened after another event or action, then the second action must have been caused by the first action. So one action happens, then a second one follows it. So the person making the argument says the first one caused the second. Now, this is not always true. This is why this is bad reasoning, bad thinking. That's why it's a logical fallacy. The structure of this argument goes something like this. A occurred, then B happened. Therefore, A caused B. Here's an example. The rooster crows right before the sun rises. Therefore, the crowing of the rooster causes the sun to rise. Now, some of you may be laughing right now, and you should be, because this is an incredibly bad argument. Because the one action that happens right before the other, which is the rooster crowing before the sun rises, does not cause the sun to rise. The two actions merely happen around the same time, but the rooster crowing does not cause the sun to rise. Here's another example. It was raining, then his car stopped working. Therefore, the rain caused his car to stop working. Now, rain doesn't cause cars to stop working. Therefore, this idea of an event happening and another one following it, so the second must be caused by the first, is not a good way of reasoning. Why? Because this type of argument confuses between two things, correlation and causation, and these two things are not the same. Correlation is when something happens with another situation, so two things happening at once. But causation is something causing something else. Here are some examples. Every day John came to school at 8.25 a.m., and every day the garbage truck came at 8.30 a.m. John going to school does not cause the garbage truck to come. What happens is John goes to school right before the garbage truck comes. But John does not cause it to come. The two events merely happen right around the same time. This is correlation. But causation is something like this. Every day the alarm rang at 6.30 a.m. And every day John woke up at 6.30 a.m. Therefore, the alarm caused John to wake up. And you can show that that's the case. Because then you can talk about the loud sound waking somebody up, the ringing. That's causation. So see how the two are different? That's why they're not the same thing. Correlation is not causation. But post hoc ergo propter hoc confuses the two. It turns correlation into causation. Here's another example. My son broke his leg after leaving school early. Therefore, leaving school early can cause broken bones. Now, this sounds like something parents would use to scare their children into going to school and staying there until the bell rings. But it probably will not be convincing for someone who's over five years old. But again, it confuses correlation with causation. The two events happen at the same time, but one did not cause the other. Now, how do we identify this fallacy? Well, number one, we determine the premises and conclusion of the argument. After we do that, we ask a question. Is the premise showing one event happened after another one? And if the answer is yes, then we have to ask another question. Does the argument conclude that the first event caused the second event without any further evidence? And if the answer is yes, then this is a post hoc fallacy. Now notice, it says, without any further evidence. Because you can argue that one event caused another and be successful. It will be a good argument. But you have to show exactly why. You have to, for example, single out every other possibility before showing that one event caused another. Here's another example. He had English class at the end of the day, and he failed his class. Therefore, having English at the end of the day caused him to fail his English class. 
Now, some of you are starting to think, wait a second, this is actually something that has happened to me or with someone that I know. This is real. And the answer is yes, but not for this reason. This is the bad argument. It could possibly be that there are some students in the class with that student who are too disruptive because it's at the end of the day and the teacher can't control them, and that's why they failed their class. Not just because it's at the end of the day. You see how this works? Trivia. Well, like we said before, the phrase post hoc ergo propter hoc is a Latin phrase which means after this, therefore because of this. Because the fallacy assumes that because an event happened after a first event, then the first event must have caused the second event. And we saw it's not always true. Now, we saw some examples that were silly and some a bit more serious. But this can become a very serious error in reasoning and can actually hurt people, for example, and for arguing in court. Let me show you an example. This man had visited her house minutes before she was found dead. Therefore, this man must have killed her. But where's the evidence? Is there a weapon? Is there a reason he should have done this? A motive? And if there's not, you can't use this to argue. It's just correlation. The two events happened around the same time. But it does not mean he caused her death. He could have entered her house and he does not know what happened. Somebody could have killed her right before. And he goes in and finds the scene of the murder. And then people may conclude he did it because he was found right there at that time. But again, that is not evidence. That's correlation. We need causation to be able to show this man is guilty. And if not, you may be wrongfully arguing against an innocent person. And this is why this fallacy can lead to certain conclusions that can have disastrous effects for people's lives. So it's good to understand that correlation does not equal causation. Because one day, you may end up being on a jury. And you may end up having to make a decision. Thanks for watching. Until next time.